Good morning. How are you guys doing? <laughs> happy Thursday. I feel like saying happy Wednesday because, um, you know, we skipped a day. But uh, it's Thursday. So happy Thursday wherever you are and whatever time it is for you. Um, let's see here. I found myself on... Um, on YouTube finally but now it says the stream's bad so it looks fine on Twitch hope you guys are gonna see me hello Louise Louise thank you so much for your patreon subscription really appreciate it um, I hope that that was an easy process for you and um, that it wasn't too invasive or anything because I know you're concerned about the account creation and all that thank you so much I really appreciate it hi Cheyenne hi Cass hi Lisa welcome how's it going Hi, Elaine. Let me move my mouse over here. Let's see, where are my little scissors? I just made sure I had everything, but I don't have my little scissors. Oh well. I have a backup pair, that's why. Hi, Malin. Awesome. Thanks for letting me know, it looks okay. I don't know what's up with YouTube lately. I'll tell ya. I'll tell ya, now it says it's good. <laughs> okay. Whatever, YouTube. <laughs> you did, Sarah? Yeah, see, I'm having trouble with it, too. I had to clear out all my cookies, my bookmarks, my cachet, my history, everything on YouTube. Um, and now I can find myself again. Where everyone else could find me and I couldn't find myself live. So it was really weird. I don't really get it. Sometimes those, you know, really big machines are really big machines. Yeah, exactly. I don't use the Internet Explorer. I use Chrome. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't use Internet Explorer. It's true. It's probably some sort of compatibility issue. It's a good point. So this is now my new favorite top to wear, even though I didn't make it. <laughs> it was a dress, now I shortened it. And it's so comfortable. I love the colors of it. You know, it was handmade by somebody. That's all that counts, right? So today we are going to sew. I'm going to try and make this two parts, but I keep looking this over. Hi, Terry. And it is like such a straightforward sew. You guys, there's no sleeve to set in. Um, there's no collar except for the collar stand. Um, there's no yoke. I mean, like, it's like shoulder seams and side seams and a band on the arm. So, you know pretty straightforward and I'm really excited about sewing it if it goes really fast maybe I'll just make another one for me but um, really I um, want to do it in two parts because I feel like that's a great pace as well and someone had said I'm really glad you're making this because I can't figure out the placket instructions and I kind of agree the very first step on here I wasn't sure what line they were talking about on the pattern so I'm gonna sew it the way I know it needs to the way it needs to finish looking like and hopefully that helps that gal out so so anywho and I got all the information on this fabric and so let's see um, let me make sure I quote it correctly though it is a, a 10 cell linen blend and I have links to it as well so I can share how to um, see it on their website so let's see she calls it a Tinsel Linen Blend. It comes in um, two other colors on their website. One's a butternut, um, which is just as cool as you think, and uh, a sky blue, and then this one, which is called Pepper, on their website. And so let's see. I think I can, let's see. I'm gonna try and link it in the um, chat here. So this is the butternut. Let's see, it'll let me post a link, right? So that's the butternut. Um, and this is the sky blue. And I will tell you, like, these look really different on the computer monitor. Like, at least the pepper does. That's a nice short link. <laughs> okay, and here, this last one I'm, I'm linking for you is the one that I am sewing right now. It looks really different. In, in person yeah so it is it's really nice I really love the feel of it 
I, you know, in person, like, it'd be really good for you guys to look at the link of the last one I sent, which is the pepper colorway, to see, like, in person, this looks almost like it has a blue cast to it, and I think that's because it has a warp and a weft that are different from each other in black and white, and so it kind of gives that kind of blending of it, like a bluish, and it, and it is kind of a chambray, um, but more of a... Um, uh, how do you say that? I mean, it's it's got more texture. You know what I mean? Hi, Polly. How's it going? Oh, is that? Oh, it was you, Sarah. That's awesome. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I didn't. I've only made one thing by Deer and Doe, and it was a pretty simple skirt. So I feel like I can't tell yet if their their description their their instructions aren't very detailed in general. But I have seen that on comments on others of their things, and so. It's like a tough call. Now that I'm writing my own pattern instructions for home sew patterns, I totally get the struggle. Sometimes it's like less is more, you know? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's simple and fitted, but there's no dart shaping through the waist or the, the back. And so that makes me kind of go, is this all it's gonna be cracked up to be? It does have a bust shaping dart though. But Sarah, I agree with you. That placket um, instruction where it says to fold it along the furthest line from the center front and then stitch it on the right side three quarters of an inch from the fold. I'm like, that leaves nothing for the placket to turn to the front. Because it says now, now like press the rest of it towards the front. I don't really know what that is. I think if I saw it in person, I'd be like, oh, got it. But um, I know how this needs to finish. I know what it needs to look like. And I know that however I'm going to sew, it's going to work just fine. You're not going to get anything different. So I hope this helps. So... <laughs> Yeah, it does, Louise, except that one has, um, is more crisp. That fabric that I used for the, the Deer and Doe skirt, isn't that funny that it does look a little bit like that? It's more crisp and um, more linen-y, like you can put a definite crease in it. This is much softer compared to that. that that's, and I made pants out of that too. Like I accidentally bought the exact same fabric at when I was visiting Hearts that I had used in that Deer and Doe Azera skirt. And I got that fabric from Needle Sharp. So it was just a complete coincidence. But that one was a little more like crisp and linen-y like. Hi, Carolina. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, your avatar is really cute. Little hand drawing. <laughs> so your muslin fit really nice. You didn't do button bands yet. Just tried the best art main seams of this one, Sarah. So you got past that point. That's good. Hi, Brooke. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome. All right. So this is a piece of scrap fabric. These are pockets. So yeah, I just thought I would show you that um, fabric on their website. I really like it. They gave me the, the fabric for the next project too. So I've already washed and dried this. I'm pretty like straightforward with all my garments. I put it, throw them in the washer and the dryer. The most gentle I'll be is washing them on cold and low dry on 20 for 20 minutes, but that's about as gentle as I'll go. Unless it's something that needs to be hand washed like my hand knits, so. Oh, that's awesome, Sarah. Yeah, I'm a double D, but this isn't gonna be my shirt. It gets sent to hearts, so. Um, but I'll still get to try it on because it is in my, my size. Yeah, Brooke, it's gonna be 110 degrees here today, you guys, 110. <laughs> It's kind of anything like over 100, um, 102, it just feels all the same. It just feels hot. Like you literally feel like you're walking into an oven. Like that whole, like, <laughs> cliche, it's true. The patterns are for curves. That's good to know. I haven't even turned my machine on. Wow. This is not the thread I plan on using. Oh, I didn't pull it through. Okay. So I say, this is navy blue, but the thread on the machine is the gray. Oh, these scissors aren't as good. Where are my scissors? So I, I put the buttons on my husband's shirt yesterday. I hemmed my uh, Dahlia dress. I was having lots of fun on my newly returned tuned up machines. Only, it's only gonna be 97 to 100 there. Oh, cool, Sarah, that's awesome. Hi, Unika, welcome, how's it going? <laughs> All right, these are, my, these are my really terrible backup scissors. I hope they're close by. Where are they? Where are my little scissors? Oh, 
I know why they're over here. I know why they're over here. I was putting together the giveaway. Uh, yeah, are you driving the bus today, Unika? We're all really fascinated by the fact that you drive a bus and listen to the stream. <laughs> like that's, that's what needs to be a live stream. We want to watch. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I think you need to do the dart first before you do the pocket because the dart gets sewn right through, right? Yeah. So we could go right into the placket, but I was going to put on the um, pocket and the dart first before the placket. I didn't, Louise. They're just like shorts I bought. I know they're my only pair of shorts I like to wear. Oh, you have autumn weather. I'm so jealous. Wow. You're working and you're off soon. Okay. Yeah, don't drive the bus, you know. Are you listening to us? Okay, so let's see here. I have my dart and my pocket both um, marked on the same side, which isn't how they're sewn. So, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, transfer my bus dart measurement to the other side. So we have one. Got my little cherry pie here. And did you guys see I got some, I got watermelon pom-poms. Hi, Rachel. And thank you. It's my stack of magnets that I keep there. Everyone needs a stack of magnets on their machine, right? <laughs> no, you do not need a stack of magnets on your machine. <laughs> All right, so this is my correct one yeah all right okay so let's do our bus start I'm gonna see if my machine's ready to go see that's why I sew it first because it does that all that thread vomit on the back oh look at that nice glom of uh, lint let's just sew a little bit more here what else are we gonna get I don't like how the top looks good, but the bottom looks darker. I think I have the wrong color bobbin in. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. We need a we need a better bobbin. I think I can use this for a little bit while this one, yeah, I'm gonna use this for a little bit and just don't use it for anything that shows. You've seen lots of nice versions of this shirt? Yeah, I, I have too. And um, the Heart Scouts are big fans of it. I'm pretty sure that Lexi made one in an octopus print. So that's pretty cool. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to line up my notches. And then I'm going to line up the point of my dart, which is where my pin went in. Your, your dart shouldn't ever torque. Like, you know, like sometimes you may mark it a little bit off than the pattern is, or the pattern is marked a little bit off. But if you line up all of your markings, see right now mine wants to kind of roll this way, and it'll create a torque, which I don't want. I don't want that torque in there. So I'm just gonna kind of correct it a little bit and split the difference. I'd rather not move the point because the point might be in the right spot. It's better to move the side seam, but hopefully you don't have to do it at all. And it's probably just my slapdash transfer of markings. Plus this was a traced pattern. I mean, there was a lots of opportunity for this to just get like one milli inch off, you know? I, I like to hand tie my darts too. All right, so now we have one. Even though I made sure I transferred my, my dart to the back side, I just like to make sure I have a left and a right, you know, because you just, you never know. That's this one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, I'm just making sure. So what have you guys been up to since I saw you on Monday or Tuesday? Wait, where did I see you? I saw you Tuesday, right? It's kind of the official first day of school. So yesterday we just 
like go and visit the campus and do the like you know pictures and do tour meet your meet your teachers and go around in the classrooms because she goes to a different type of high school it's, it's awesome they built a brand new campus i had no idea they were doing that can you believe that they've been like oh we're moving to our new campus this fall it's at this um, and they and they named this location and I was like, oh, they must have like been donated that location because it was a former, ch it's a church. And I thought, oh, maybe the church came from the location. I was picturing like a converted building, but no, it's like all brand new, built to spec. It's gorgeous. Um, it was so exciting to see. Can you believe I didn't even know that they built a whole brand new school? Like how in the dark was that? Eliza's here? I didn't see how I, Eliza, where is she? Oh, there she is. Awesome. You're sitting in the airport in Baltimore. Oh my gosh, the Wi-Fi must be kind of challenging there. They posted the um, Mellow today. That's awesome. Yeah, I know they love this shirt. Um, let's iron our dart and then we're going to actually how about I'm gonna sew my pocket and then we can iron both at the same time. So there's a pocket and a pocket lining. The pocket lining is not going to show. You could do some really cute fun fabric, but it won't show. I'm pretty sure the way you do this is you, um, is this five eighths of an inch? I think so. I, saw, I read that. That's kind of big. I'm going to kind of match it up like this. I can't tell if it's intentionally smaller or if I cut it badly, but it looks intentionally smaller to me because it's kind of the same amount all the way around. Kind of like when you do a uh, under collar, you know? That is such a big seam allowance. I'm gonna look at my curve here, make sure that this curve right here got a little flat. That's what gives you challenges when you try and turn it, you know? There we go. I'm gonna clip my curve. I really wanna trim it all the way down. <laughs> it's, it's hard not to. Oh, that's a, that's a bummer, Sarah. Yeah, are you at a high school or any school, I guess? Hi, Katie. How's it going? Are you from SoCal? That's where I grew up. I grew up in SoCal. I grew up on the block. Well, I, didn't, I, I, I say I grew up there, but I just spent a lot of my childhood there. So I um, lived on the block literally next to Disneyland. <laughs> In, in a condominium complex. Me and my mom lived there for a long time. Your son started sixth grade yesterday, your daughter high school today. Aww. And then high school on Monday. That's awesome, Malin. That's awesome. Well, Louise, you know, I try. You've seen me get into trouble over that before, though, so you know better. Oh, elementary, elementary yeah. I, um, I volunteered at a high school doing kind of this. You know, I would coach them through a, I am gotta trim this, this I can't do, I can't leave that. I'm just gonna taper it in here. Um, and uh, it was really funny, like <laughs> what was blocked in the computers. And so I was in the art, the, like there was this, this independent arts institute inside the high school, it was amazing really unique program it's like a magnet now for people to move all the way to the nether reaches of california for people to put their kids in it and um uh they had all these beautiful mac computers in there and the kids got really crafty on how to get around some of the filters because some of those filters you know they need some of that information for reports and things like that this is just like too much fabric I don't know why it feels different than just turning under the edge. It, partly because it's two layers, right? And the reason I'm not doing the placket first is that um, traditionally you would do all your pockets and darts first before you put your placket on. Plackets are usually kind of towards the middle of the garment with the collar. So I'm just doing it in that order because of that. There's no, nothing wrong with the way they do it. That's crazy, Katie. So that's where I moved to. My mom got remarried and we moved to the high desert and I really hated it. 
But, you know, like, I met some great people there, of course. I just didn't like being in the high desert very much. So, yeah, yeah, I know. Anywhere, if you're living on the coast, the weather's been just, like, gorgeous in California. My parents were, just came from, like, where it typically would be, like, foggy and, and cloudy, and um, they said it was gorgeous. I'm doing this wrong, aren't I, you guys? Am I doing this the way they want you to? Let me make sure. I am. I am. Weird. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'm going to press that one, and then we'll do this one. Yeah, see, this is a little bit smaller around the edges there. But that could be just my cutting. Curves are tricky, and remember, this is a traced pattern, so anything, anytime, like when you cut it, when you sew it, when you do, like every little step you do when you touch your project adds the potential for a little bit of mistake to happen. It's kind of what um, drives you nuts in the garment industry, especially because you as the designer cutting and sewing your little pro prototypes in the design room or with your sample maker you're cutting one out you're not cutting a stack of 5,000 and so um, the accuracy is pinpoint you know practically like as much as you can control it and then you know you hand it over to other people who are more in a hurry um, they really need to get it done and then they are, you know, maybe cutting 20 to try like a sample run of it. And then you start getting into little, just little tiny increments of error, which is understandable. You have to build in that tolerance. Like that's what they call it. They call it tolerance. They call it tolerance and sizing too. So they'll measure, you'll measure finished garments and it has to be within a tolerance of error, you know, because you have to allow that. You know, the point of, yeah, it is thinking hot up there. <laughs> Um, the point usually of lining a pocket like this is to make it so that you can get a nice curve around the perimeter so that when you go to stitch it on the garment, your curve is nice and rounded rather than relying on yourself to fold under the edge as you go. And you know how I am, Louise. I, I will, um, not even like iron it or pin it first. Let me uh, turn on my iron. I forgot to do that too. Yeah, so if, uh, you know, now, now that I have this all sewn, I can press it and I just stitch it down, right? So I've got a nice, hopefully symmetrical pockets to each other and a curve. Just makes it a little easier. Yeah, so, so we'll put, put our um, iron our darts down and then our pockets go right here. I almost got a little fancy yesterday and was like picked out a binding for the hem. But I decided just to keep this, you know, it doesn't have to have something flashy in it. It's so weird that it doesn't have a yoke. I don't know why. I keep thinking there's a yoke scene back there, but there's not. All right, let's iron this. I'm not ironing from the right side. I don't want any of that creeping out from underneath. There's a little bit of a taper right here on this edge here. I don't know if you can see it. That is so that um, you're going to fold it in a little bit and now your fold won't. Because you're going to. Essentially, you're folding it along the seam line, right? They're just encouraging you to make sure that when you fold this down and stitch it, all of it in, is inside the pocket there. So you could do a little more just to make it easier. The stitching, you're not going to see this angle on the outside because you don't stitch on it. Oh, I forgot I turned off my steam. So I'm going to tuck that in there. See that? It's 
get rid of some of these threads here. Just get rid of them. All they're going to do is keep unraveling like that anyway. So. Yeah, I agree, Malin. Yeah, exactly, Louise. You could totally do that. I like that idea. Just hold, like sewing around the, the curved edge there and then um, pulling it a little bit like we do when we ease the sleeve on. Yeah, I like that idea. But you, you know, this, this top, this shirt could be made in um, really lightweight fabrics. See, well, this is what I don't like right here. This right here poking out. Let's try and get that on the inside like that. It's funny, there's no ever really a guarantee to prevent one thing. You'll just create another issue. <laughs> It's not negative. It's just, you know, you just got to pick your pick the issue you want to deal with, honestly. Or maybe base it on what fabric you're using. Like if your fabric is really challenging for certain types of sewing, customize your sewing based on that. This fabric's nice though. It feels nice and um, sturdy, but it like, but it still has like softness and drape. Like, it feels like it's gonna last a long time too, but not in a like heavy way. It feels just nice and good quality. And it comes in such interesting colors. Let's see if this one looks like it. Pretty close. Let's just fold that in there. I can tell one of these is slightly off grain, which makes it look really crooked to me. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can. Get rid of that. None of that nonsense. And then this is the outside pocket. We'll stitch across that hem and then we'll stitch the pocket on. But yeah, it does look a little off grain or something. Let's see if we can correct it. It looks like it's almost the same. Right? Right there, it looks a little different. We'll see. All right, let's press our dart down. I always lift the fabric up so I can get the iron into the point there and round it out a little bit and get it as nice and smooth as possible. We don't like those puckers there. It's a focal point. Yeah, exactly, Malin. That's what I was thinking, too. It's nice to have that kind of modesty. I, I, I sometimes see top blouses I really like, but they're so sheer, and I'm just like, I have to wear something underneath that, and then that you, that has to be a nice garment, too, <laughs> you know? All right, so let's see here. After these pockets, I'll have a full bobbin, and I can switch. Let's do our hem here. I'm going to do it from the outside because my bobbin is the wrong color, in my opinion. I like the top thread color better. Now when you're sewing this, I would go for the width being equal rather than it being on the edge perfectly the whole way just in case you didn't iron it perfectly the right width. It'd be, it's nicer if you have a nice um, parallel line there to the fold edge at the top. 
Sometimes uh, sewing from the outside gives you that opportunity. <laughs> Makes it a little easier to do that. All right, so these little areas here, I kind of like this right here poking out. But we can tuck that in when we stitch the pocket down, thankfully. All right, so I'm going to start upside down. Just in case it's, this pocket's going to get some use, it's nice to reinforce it with a little V at the top, a little triangle. Just kind of working with the shaping of the dart. I'm going to pin it in a couple places so it doesn't want to shift. And then I, I start at the hem. I go in a little bit um, towards the center of the pocket, a couple stitches, and then back out to the edge there. So I have a little triangle. Just reinforces when you're putting your hand in and out your pocket all the time. If you can do it, a nice continuous stitch here, you'll probably have a nice smooth curve. It's a little hard though to not stop. I keep lifting up my presser foot to relieve some of the tension. So now here's one the spot right here. I'm going to tuck this in. Like that. Bye, Rachel. Yeah, no worries. Go up along the edge and then I go in the same number of stitches I went out on this one, which was just one on this case. It doesn't take much. But boy, it looks crooked to me. <laughs> Does it look crooked to you guys? What the heck? <laughs> it looks really crooked to me. Mm, I feel like I could get that better. Wait, I want to do this. I want to check it. Sometimes these optical illusions, you know? No, look at that. Like, when we folded it over there, it was not that far off. Hmm, I'm fixing that. I am fixing that. How am I going to fix that? I think the easiest place is up here. I'm going to fold down the top a little bit more. I always do this on pockets, you guys. So if I checked this one and it was the same as the other, that may mean my other one's a little off too. Me and my... See, it's Miller time already, you guys. I can hardly see the stitches on this fabric. Why couldn't the texture of this fabric hide my little um, uneven pocket? <laughs> Rather than it'd be hard to find my stitches. I'm always really careful about pulling out stitches. I don't, especially with these fabrics that have a different warp and weft. You, you know, the needle, when it's parting the fabric a little bit, might make it look a little whiter in a certain spot because the white threads are will show be more. Right, where's Nancy? <laughs> nice one, Louise. You got it. Okay, so let's see here. So I'm going to take out a little bit more here because I think what I want to do is fold this down a little bit more like this. That means I need to take this out here. See, it's been a day, so, you know, my sewing is going to be kind of bad. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> exactly. It's never too early for the steam ripper. Where would we be without it? All right, I just want to get a little bit. 
Heck, let's just take the whole thing off. I'm gonna take the whole thing off so I don't have start and stops. Let's get this better. Oh, I, I returned the shirt to the gal at the farmer's market and, and it seemed like it was okay. So that's good. Hi, Petey, how's it going? It's okay. We're here for a bit. Sometimes life is, you know, it's happening, right? I'm already seam ripping, so you know what that means. It's gonna be a good day. Always need your seam ripper. I'm sure me using the seam ripper will call Nancy. It's like a siren call for her. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's make this a little more symmetrical. Like right here, doesn't look so bad. Right there, it looks kind of bad. You gotta know where you're gonna adjust your thing. And sometimes like, I can't really just tuck under more of the bottom, like right here. Cause it would have been like really thick, right? So we've already finished that. If we hadn't like faced and lined the pocket. Um, hello, uh, wow, wow, how do you say your name? Hutter Maoris. <laughs> Welcome, I'm streaming live on um, Twitch and YouTube. Just so you know, I am chatting with folks over there. So it may look like um, I'm talking to imaginary people. Maybe they are, you never know, never know. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get this out of the way. Let's fold this here. We thought it was symmetrical, it's not. Let's get rid of all these threads. These little threads, man, they really show up in a different way on a fabric like this. So you really wanna get rid of them. All right, so here we go. Let's split the difference. Maybe I could instead make this side a little taller rather than lowering the other one to match this one. And then we'll compare it to the other pocket to see where it's at, you know? Hut armories, is that what it is? Oh my gosh. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny, the R and the M run together. And you know how, how it's like in yellow font? It's hard to see like what I'm looking at. So often like certain letters look like M's and, and N's, you know, like and they're not the same. Okay. Let's see here. What we'll do is we'll put a pin on both sides here where we want to fold this so that we get it nice and symmetrical. Let's look at our other one. Oh yeah, this will be a little better. Oh, but I need to do it from the side. That's right, because my bobbin's not quite the right color yet. We're winding a bobbin right now as we speak. That's what my machine does. That better? That's a lot better. We certainly don't like these white threads poking out that little spot though. That looks more on grain now too. Let's see. Okay, not bad. We're going for it. 
can see where I stitched pretty good. So we'll lay our pocket back on there. Uh, no, it doesn't use a larger bobbin. My machine, um, I just mean that um, on the side of my machine, your machine, an industrial machine can be winding a bobbin as you're sewing with the bobbin. It's separate though. So um, like right now my, my bobbin is full. It's kind of like on the machine on the side. So now my bobbin's fold and full and now I can put a new one over there. I'm gonna get rid of this one. And then I just set it up. You just need to have two, two spools of thread going at the same time. <laughs> That's such a great way to put it, Jane. I love that. No, you, yeah, we talked about, oh shit, sorry. You guys, I just sewed without my bobbin in. Wow, when have I done that on stream? Never. Don't ever do that. Yeah, my relationship with my super is that of an assistant. I really need it. I don't, I, it's funny how people are really scared to admit they use them. You know, like, I don't know how you do it without it. Here's my bobbin case right here. And I didn't even see that, wow. Whew. It's the first time I've done that on this machine and I've owned it for a year. I'm just making sure I get everything out of there. I can see a thread right here. Yeah, right? Wow, Sarami, indeed. I distracted myself. I can see a thread here, so I just wanna make sure I get it. Plus my machine's on right now. It's not threaded right now. Oof. You are distracting friends. I don't blame you guys. That's something I do so automatically, you know, change my bobbin and um, stuff. So it's bound to happen, you know, bound to happen. But I didn't break my machine. That I can tell. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out of sewing with you guys today. We've had some rough sews lately, haven't we? And now I can't thread my my needle. Wah! Okay, here's this is me putting my bobbin in my machine now. You, all you missed, Unica, was me almost ruining my machine. That's all. No, no big deal. <laughs> all right. So my first few stitches, because I, you know, I'm a little spooked, is I'm gonna do with the hand wheel and just see how it goes. We're good. Okay. Where's my little pocket? Here's one. Here's the other. Let's do this. Phew. Yeah, we talked last time or maybe a couple times ago about um, just like really how amazing the seam ripper is. Like if I could write poetry, it'd be like ode to a seam ripper, you know, because truly it's such an amazing little 
a simple contraption, you know, and we need it. And then we were all like, you know, why isn't it called after the person who invented it? And then we learned that it was someone with the last name of Miller. So that's why we now say Miller time. It's Miller time. So I'm going to try and smooth out the dart underneath a little better than I did the first time. But I'm going to make sure that this pocket stays parallel to this edge over here. And I'm also going to, I don't know if you can see, a little bit of my pocket lining is trying to creep out under there. So I'm just going to kind of roll it to the underside and stitch it under there. I honestly, right now, I'm thinking like lining the pockets is more trouble than it's worth. Do you guys agree? <laughs> But hey, I needed this shirt to take a little longer than I thought it would anyway, so <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> okay, that looks better to me. You can still see the bust shape in there, which is nice. That's good. All right, let's do our other one here. Yeah, right, Katie? Exactly. <laughs> do you, Lisa? That's awesome. Can't say as I've ever had a Miller. I've had one beer in my entire life. I don't like beer. The only beer I've had was a Guinness in a pub in Ireland and whew, it was painful. I think it was painful for everyone in that pub watching me drink it too, to be honest. Okay, I'm lining up my um, line here and making sure it's parallel to the front. I'm gonna try and get that dark shape in there. It's so hard to keep it, maintain it into the pocket. Uh, it's a lady's shirt. Yeah, it's pretty curvy. The fabric looks a little bit like a, like a work shirt chambray, probably on the camera especially, um, but it's a great, great basic. Like, I, I really like this fabric. You could even make a light pair of pants, like those free range slacks I've been making a lot of lately. Um, you could even do that with this fabric. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not workwear fabric, but it is um, got enough substance that you can wear it as lightweight bottom bottoms. Okay, so this is a little spot creep, trying to creep out here from the fold. I'm going to tuck that in there. doing one stitch for that triangle leg at the top there. One's enough. It still gives it the triangle look and it'll still give it a little bit of reinforcement. It's not a work shirt, right? So. Okay, should we move on to something else? <laughs> I'll bet Katie would like to see this placket. <laughs> so um, for this placket, I'm literally just going to fold it and fold it and stitch it down. I, I don't know, the instructions say to do something like fold it on the line furthest away from the cut edge. And I have a tracing of the pattern, but they drew lines on it. So I am, I'm thinking that, that this is still the, fold, the furthest line away. And then it says on the right side to stitch three quarters of an inch from this fold. So that'd be like right here. And then to pull this to the front, but in the picture you see a lot of fabric coming to the front like this and that wouldn't that would it, nothing would come to the front so I, I think that I'm either misinterpreting it or I don't have all the markings or uh, I don't know what else so 
Oh, thanks, Leah. I got it in Mexico. Yeah, I think a Cali could work. I don't know. Any of those, um, try the Colette Negroni shirt for men. Yeah, and, um, Thread Theory was having a sale on all of her printed patterns, by the way. And she does menswear. All right, I'm going to, um, I'm going to iron the placket now. <laughs> well, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to iron the placket. <laughs> yeah, I think this could be a simple sew, Terry. Oh, that's awesome, Petey. I love my all. It's ever so useful for me. Okay, so let's see here. We did kind of some uh, fancy um, folding and stitching on the the what was the men's shirt we just did by Thread Theory? Uh, the Fairfield button up. She does a what is an industry term? <laughs> they call it a button. The budget placket. It's not budget as in like. Don't think of it as like cheap or a shortcut. It is, but don't think of it as in a negative way. It's actually a legit way to do a, a placket with, because the, the way you do traditional plackets in menswear is just kind of a complicated folding technique. Took me a while to get the hang of it. <laughs> I haven't done one in years though. But you get to do some of that in the Fairfield button up. And you kind of do some folding to make it look like that. I'm gonna put these threads I'm gonna line them up. I can keep I can keep pulling them, but it'll just keep they'll just keep coming. So rather I would rather than be in the fold here, these threads, rather than creeping onto the placket and you could feel them through the shirt. That's kind of a pet peeve, and it comes from having chicken boots. Because I didn't like threads sitting on top of the stiffener and, and the customers being able to see them. That's awesome, Leia. Mine was a dress and then I cut it. <laughs> they, oh, Sarah, they didn't give me that part. Okay, well, there you go. That makes sense then. You know, those gals have sewn, the gals at Hearts are such big fans of this shirt and they've sewn so many of them that um, I could see, they just know it by heart and they probably just sent me what they knew I needed, you know? And, and this is really all I need. I can tell how it's supposed to go. You can tell later in the directions. I looked, I looked really thoroughly. I didn't look online, but. So I'm just folding it. I was gonna put um, some fabric in there for a interfacing, but this fabric is stout enough. I even cut it, it's right here. This is, this is thick enough. I don't wanna make it any thicker. really trying not to fold that fabric underneath there. You can kind of see that ridge when that happens, you know? Yeah, but Sarah, this is sufficient. If you just fold along these pockets, I walked it on the um, collar and it worked. Pretty sure. Ah, okay. You fold them back and out of the way. Well, let's double check the collar. The best way to check it is to measure rather than walk it. I mean, the most accurate way would be so I'm gonna m measure this five eighths inch up, and I get eight and seven eighths on the seam line. Mm 
No. It doesn't work. Oh, wait a minute here. I did the whole thing. I just need this part right here. <laughs> That's hilarious. I did this correct before I started streaming. So, so five and three eighths. That sounds better. So I get five and a quarter. So that could just be me measuring and the way I cut it. So that is only an eighth of an inch different. So that's that's within tolerance. That'll be totally fine. So I just folded the placket along the two notches here. Um, I'm using the fold as the interfacing for the placket as well. Yeah, so I only had two marked lines. You're right. This is what I have. Version B. So. It'll still work. This is how it's going to end up, right? I'm pretty sure. Actually, for you fold the two sections of the hidden pocket back, not the way. But the but each placket is the same, correct? Hi, Nancy. <laughs> um, because the 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 fronts are symmetrical. So you can sew each of them differently, but you have to come up with the exact same length on the neckline for the collar to work because the collar is also symmetrical. So um, I'm not sure. I, I will probably look into this further afterward and see what, what other options there are. So let's, what should we no, do next? Let's do our um, back to our front. I'm not going to hem mine until the end either. I was going to use the serger, you guys, but this will go way too quick if I do that. So I'm going to do the um, two French seams because it's only on the shoulder and on the underarm. Get one is narrower. The two sections you didn't get. So are there two different fronts, Sarah? So they only get one front. I'm sorry, I'm not sewing it the way it should be sewn. And you've gotten yours almost all the way done, correct, Sarah? Except for that putting on the, the uh, collar. sides together no there's one front piece okay yeah so I can I can see that like there's a lot of patterns where they have like the outer placket is a little bit more has more um, detail oh I didn't end up sewing my <laughs> placket you guys I'm a little out of it here <laughs> Oh, man. I am just lately a complete weirdo. All right, let's sew my placket. I'm like, I just iron it, and I'm like, it's done. <laughs> okay. I'm going to really try and keep it consistently the same width. I don't want any torquing, so I'm actually going to hold it offer some stability to it. And this is the right front, so it'll be on the top. Boy, this thread matches really good. I'm gonna edge stitch this one. It's not like we need to go up one side and down the other, is it? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. This looks pretty long, Sarah, is it? <laughs> I 
can't believe I didn't sew those. That's so funny. I've done that before where I like iron it and I'm like, okay, that's done. This is, this is right here. This is a pet peeve. I don't like that. Like I haven't, I haven't ironed a little bit off. Like I could get this a little bit closer. Like this one's right and this one, it could be my marking. Oh no. But um, this, like that is such a pet peeve for me that it's not flush with the neckline right there. Whew. That bugs me. It's enough seam allowance that it'll be fine, but um, t traditionally necks and uh, collars um, are quarter inch seam allowance, so then it wouldn't make it. So this is the under placket. A little thread there. All right, let me iron the um, shoulders. That jars your nuts too, yeah. <laughs> right, Terry? Oh, okay, Sarah. Yeah, the cali was really short on the sides. Yeah, I, that's where my cali went wrong, to be honest. Is I disregarded where that um, swoop on the side seam it hit. Because I didn't want to make my cali shirt really long. Because I knew it wouldn't look right on me. And then I ended up making it too short. I could not wear that as a dress. Um, and so that was really subtle. And so now my Cali dress is a shirt and it's definitely not as magnificent as it was when it was a dress. Kind of a bummer. Cause that swoop goes way up at the side. It's like it's French cut. <laughs> it's a French cut tunic basically. This one is really similar to the Cali shirt, you guys. Like, as far as the way the um, sleeve and the shoulder and the silhouette, but there's no yoke on this one. And there's no gigantic pleat in the back on this one. Whereas the Cali has a big pleat in the back. But there's something up with it. Something up with the fit on the back of that one for me on my body. Doesn't work so well. Good morning, Kara. How's it going? We're doing good here. I almost broke my machine, but you know, it's all good. My machine gave me a pass today. Decided not to die. My phoenix rose from the ashes. I don't know how many lives it has in it, but hopefully more than one. It's nice. It's like the, the shoulder has a nice curve to it, but um, usually your shoulder doesn't have a curve. So I bet this is kind of gives you some nice shoulder slope um, since there's no set in sleeve and you know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, it might offer uh, some shaping so it doesn't like slip to the, the back like like traditional kimono style is. Oh, OK, Sarah, that's good to know. Yeah, I've heard the in front. Does that date me? <laughs> okay. There's, there's a perfect uh, type of seam allowance for doing French seams, and the pattern instructions have you sew it with French seams. You don't have to. You could do flat felt or um, the serger or zigzag. Lots of options. You have five eighths of an inch seam allowance to play with. So, 
both so far. So the back is really plain, see that? I think, what size did I do? I think I did the, I'm not sure what size I did. I, I cut the size they traced because that's what they wanted. But it's probably the 38 as well. Yeah, I sewed on my machine without the bobbin in there, Nancy. <laughs> Rookie mistakes. Rookie mistakes. All right, what's the next step in this? I think I'm gonna do the side seam and I'm gonna do the, um, maybe I'll do the hem. Oh, Megan, what do you mean? Did, they're doing a romper as the, the backup pattern? Cause I don't think they're, I think this month's pattern is the romper, isn't it? Time is it already noon? Yeah, this is so quick. Like we've had long streams and and sewn the entire garment. This would be a regular length stream, and we could do the entire garment. So look at that curve, you guys. Look at that nice shaping. There's the waist, and it goes out at the hip. So without having waist starts, you you really get a lot of bang for your buck with the side seam. You know? Oh, so I finished my uh, sample of the Tamarack jacket for my class coming up. I did a vest. It turned out pretty cool. I have some pictures. I'll have to post them for you guys. I really, really, really wanted to do a um, a quilt like find a like a just a lovingly used older quilt hand stitching and all that wasn't probably good enough to go on a bed even if it had stains and stuff and I just wanted that to do that but I could not find one that was you know that is so hit and miss yeah exactly Nancy it was bad never saw another pattern in the box you checked out that box they are doing a romper as the pattern. Never saw the pattern in the box. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm lost. Um, so I ended up using some wool that I had that I actually think I bought when I was in uh, the UK somewhere. I'm not sure. And uh, and then I lined it with that cantha fabric that I used for my willow tank dress, the one that looks hand stitched. And it turned out really good. It's cute. It's already hanging in the store probably. Yeah, you skipped the coulons in the jumpsuit. I remember that, Nancy. All right, let's so uh, let's uh press these. So Sarah, I hope that placket, that placket um, sewing will help you. Like that'll work for your needs. Sorry, I'm not doing it the way the pattern suggested. If the um, if the way we do it works with the collar, then it it's gonna be the same circumference as it would have been. I'm kind of excited about that, those culottes I'm doing on Saturday, the Tanya culottes. Are they Tanya or Tanya? I don't know. I think they're going to feel like a, feel and look like a skirt, but have the, the benefits of shorts, which I'm down for that. Sounds great. 
I like it when my thighs don't rub. <laughs> and with 100 de 110 degrees today, that's why I wore shorts. I had to wear shorts today. I wear them under my dresses a lot too. Okay, good. Have I ever sewn with only a bobbin? I've heard of that, but I haven't. Oh, that's true, Carrie. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking your name's probably not Carrie. It's probably something Ridley. Okay, good, Sarah, I'm glad. The box never showed a different pattern other than the jumpsuit, Megan. Like, um, for the, uh, you're talking about needle sharp, right? Because she usually has four to choose from. And so one thing I will say is that she has a blog and she has her website. They may even be in the same spot. It's Karen. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. When I looked at your name a little closer, I was like, K.E. Ridley. <laughs> um, I'll try and remember it's Karen. Yeah, we're kind of really down on long arm quilters around here. After the campfire, a lot of them actually and coincidentally lived up in Megalia in Paradise. And so someone even asked me to do that. They were like, you know, you could have a full time business if you wanted to do long arm quilting here. Um, I know nothing about that. I'm not going to get into that. So um, hopefully someone takes up the mantle because there sounds like they're really scrambling to have enough people to do that now. Um, but on the needle sharp thing, I agree. So there's, there's definitely a trickiness to her website. There's a lot of information there. Oh God, Nancy, it's 110 degrees here. I don't feel like our summer's over. But I do feel like we're on the cusp like soon of getting cool nights. And that's like, I am ready for that. They say to sew that way for sheer fabrics. Oh, right. I have seen that, Megan. I've never tried it. Do you sew a lot of uh, sheer fabrics? I don't sew a lot of sheer fabrics, but I, I would love to try that technique just, for, just to try it out. It sounds really cool. Oh, I have a few threads here. Let's try and uh, clip that. And clip this one. All right, so now is the choice. I have the hems, the collar, the sleeves. What would you guys like to see? Hem, collar, or sleeves right now? Um, or I can save it all for tomorrow. Let's do part of it, because I actually think I would like to try and do the buttons and buttonholes with you guys. Yeah, that's true, Brooke. So today is the day, she, I think, that she announced next month's, wait, yeah, you're right, Brooke. She usually announces the next box on the first of the month, or ships them on the first of the month. I can't remember. <laughs> the quilting part's your least favorite. Yeah, Leah, I know. I think that's why a lot of people just send it out to do that. Yeah, I think so too, Brooke. It's jackets, that's right. She announced it's jackets for next month. Um, collar, Jane? All right, let's do the collar. Okay, two votes for collar. Cool. Let's do the collar. That's awesome, Lauren. Me too, Nancy. Oh, there was a typo in the email where it said jumped to the bottom of the email. Okay. Yeah, my th issue with that is like, I want to see all of the pattern styles. Okay, Beverly, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm not a pro at them, but I do them. <laughs> I'll just tell you that right now. Yeah, I didn't, I know, Nancy. It's kind of, I, like, who developed that technique? That would be crazy to do. Crazy. Okay, so here's my collar stand. 
Um, there's a little notch right here, and that is probably for the collar. If you sew it without the with, with just, uh, if you sew the collar and the collar stand, they requested just the collar stand, and I didn't do interfacing like I said because um, I, I, I they didn't send any, and that that's fine actually. I really like using fabric for my interfacing. Um, and I'm kind of trying to decide right now. I, I probably will. I think I will, yeah. We're going to we're gonna use fabric for the interfacing. I like using cell fabric when it's something like this, like a woven. It's just my little preference. I really like doing it that way. And I'm pretty sure if I read the instructions correctly, they sew this the way I would sew this, where they start from the inside of the garment and go to the outside, which made me really happy. Yeah, so I feel like collars are like, um, it's like a, sometimes I think of it as like a seam, an edge finish, right? Because it's like, this is the, the shirt and this is your collar and it's like, it's just like clamping down on there. But it's got a mind of its own. We all know that. So this is my three layers. I'm going to do this right sides together. Five-eighths inch seam. All the way around. This is a really wide uh, seam allowance for a collar stand. Because we're going to have to trim all that off. Especially like getting these curves symmetrical to each other with this wide of a seam allowance. Can be really tricky so just take your time draw a line on it if you like that will help um, and collar stands aren't like collars where you can do an under collar because i think under collars really set you up for success right because you can make them a tiny bit smaller and then if you line up your raw edges and sew them together the um the smaller piece gets pulled to the inside right and then your seam doesn't like creep to the other to the outside both collar stands they they aren't like they aren't sewn that way they're not going to um fold they're going to stand straight up all right so i'm gonna just cut all this off Really hoping my plaque gets sewn correctly and my neckline's gonna fit. A little nervous about it. I do have some extra fabric and enough if I if I have a boo-boo. See, so why not make a quarter inch seams, right? Okay, I'm gonna hold this up to it right now because I'm nervous about it. And just see. I have a, a shoulder notch somewhere. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah. Look at that. Perfecto. There's, okay, we're fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, like a pointed one, Sarah. I know, that little rounded edge is so... Um, you are either a fan of those or you're not, right? It's, it's like they can be kind of childish, but they can also be kind of sweet. I'm gonna reinforce the stitching on the other side. I got really close to the thread in one spot. This one. All right, so I only notched one of my collars and it's this one right here, so I'm gonna turn that. Too short for and don't plan on making coat. Oh, Megan, I'm sorry. You know, um, they have backup boxes. Like if you choose not to go with what they have, they do have past boxes and backup boxes. Yeah, she's in a real 80s mood lately. <laughs> for better or worse, you know? I had to read that text. <laughs> Sorry. Daughter's first day of school and she's texting me something. Who knows? So. <laughs> oh, J 
jackets. Oh, you're interested. Yeah, I'm sure to hear plan. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> right, Nancy? <laughs> oh, Sarah, that'll be pretty. Maybe it would soften the, the look, you know, the overall look of those squares, you know? I like putting round shapes with, if it's, you know, unless you want to go with that kind of look. Okay, so turning my curve here. Now you don't want to top stitch this yet because you don't want to lose um, your seam line right here. You don't want to lose any length of this. If you top stitch the edge here, you can't get that edge onto your shirt anymore. You need it to be un uh, top stitched. And so I'm, I like doing these from the inside of the garment to the outside. That way I know it's going to work out. Okay, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has five eighths of an inch seam allowance. <laughs> and um, here we go. Let's see here. I want, uh, yeah, I want this one. So I want the one with the interfacing to be on the outside of the garment. So I'm going to attach the one without the interfacing first because we're on the inside of the garment right now. Right side um, to wrong side. And I'm just about to do that wrong. <laughs> it was laying so nice and flat. It felt so good. I wanted to do it wrong so badly. <laughs> You know, I know, Megan, they're, they're, maybe she doesn't have any right now or she's about to change them. See, the problem with doing the inside ones, I didn't do the markings for it. So let's do the markings for it. Okay, so here's my center back. We need these markings. Why didn't I put them on the whole thing? I only cut the interfacing today. I was kind of surprised to see I didn't. I know I said why during the video, but I don't know why I did. Yeah, you can always email her. She's pretty um, responsive. Her name's Mary. Okay, right side of the inside collar stand to the wrong side of the shirt. And so. I can't get quite up there yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the center. Oh geez, sorry guys. Because I'm using the fabric, I'm getting confused. Um, so I'm going to start with the right side of the um, collar stand to the wrong side of the shirt. I'm going to start from the center and then work my way around. Yeah, I do, Katie especially for collars. Something like this, um, the, when you think about the collar when it's finished, the seam allowance of the neckline is going to be go up, right? Up like this. Whereas the collar is going to be like this. It's gonna like come around like this around it. It's gonna stand straight up. So you don't really need to grade the seams there. Um, it's great to do it when you have really thick seams or you need something to lay flat then it's really helpful, and I definitely do. All right, and I'm just gonna do all my anchor points. So I'm gonna mark my shoulders, because then I know I'm on the right track when I get there. And when you, when you match these kinds of things, remember, the seam line is way down here. It's like right here. So try and get it as like perpendicular to that marking as possible so that when you're marking it, you're actually marking it on the seam line way down there. And if you're a little nervous about, you know, sewing it, you can always start from the center and go towards the front and then do the same thing. But it, it's a little easier if you just do it all in one fell swoop. So I like to turn the collar kind of right side out at this edge here. And I'm gonna line it up as if it's sewn already like this. Let's get, I have a little bit of thread vomit happening there though. So let's get that up into my collar. Let's see, I just kind of line it up like this. I always take my time at this spot. This is the trickiest spot, right? It's the most visible.
and I'm pinning it through the seam allowance of that, like that. I really want to trim three eighths of an inch off of the neckline and on the collar. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know, Nancy. I've emailed her so much. I feel terrible sometimes emailing her again. All right. I don't know why. I always pin this and then I always take out the pin because I just can do better if I don't pin it. The pin kind gets in my way. Okay, now I have it anchored. I can kind of get my sewing legs under me, kind of like your sea legs. Like this. And so this all looks like a big old mess, right, to deal with. Don't worry about it. Just deal with the quarter inch that you're about to sew first. Do a quarter inch, then a quarter inch, you know what I mean? So I keep that lined up. And you, you do want a perpendicular um, approach to where your collar joins like this. You don't want it to be at an angle. It's, it's really easy to do. I do it myself. It's so much fabric when it's this wide of a seam allowance. It, it really is easier to sew this if you trim it down to a quarter inch. I know that probably makes people a little bit nervous to trim because I feel like there's no going back to that. Going back to like adding the seam allowance back on there, but it really is easier to maneuver your garment around the curves when you have less fabric um, folding in on itself in the way. So here we are. This was really easy to set in as far as like the, the distance is working out good. Let's see, I'm gonna look at that. There's my notch and my shoulder line right there. Don't want to get any little tuck. It's really easy on the shoulders when they're got a little bit of an angle in them. Yeah, there's a lot of cute jumpsuits, but I, I don't like getting undressed. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Carolina. I feel like I saw something like that. You know, um, sometimes um, people will just make a top and pants in the exact same fabric and it kind of gives you that faux jumpsuit look, especially if the top ends right at the waistline. I feel like I just saw, like in the last couple weeks, um, the Sew Over 50 account post something like that. They're really good at promoting people's cleverness. All right, so I don't really want to run out of a uh, neckline here, so I'm going to line it up right now and pin it even though I'm, I'm going to take it out when I get closer plus I have this pinned on the underside but this way now I have my uh, seam line stabilized as I go around and when I get to this collar edge opening I open it up that way I can get the collar edge as close to the um, seam line or right on the seam line it's a little easier, I can see it. So I open it up. You got really gotta let it know who's boss here. Let's see how I did here. Let's see if I have any tucks. I felt like I was starting to get a tuck right here. Oh, this is the outside. This is the outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do have one right here. See that? I think that's the thread of the fabric, though, so I'm going to pull the a little bit away just so I make sure I don't pull the thread of the fabric. There we go. So we need to fix this right here. Once I trim that, like, clip into the neckline, it'll be easier. You can kind of see. See how it's all trying to wrinkle up? So that's a really wide seam allowance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, or you can take a jumpsuit. Exactly. 
I love the Seamworks Sky, Katie. I actually bought that one with my credits, and um, I have that printed out and everything. I wanted to sew it this summer. I just didn't get to it. We did all kinds of other stuff. I like how simple it is. And it's really flattering. Plus it comes in lots of sizes. All right. Um, so I'm gonna try and leave all this seam allowance. Oh, I don't think I can do it. I'm not gonna leave the seam allowance in here. <laughs> I, can't, I just can't do it, you guys. I'm gonna trim it down. Just make sure I don't trim my blouse. Just doing this is going to make the, the seam where the collar's sewn on relax. Okay, now I'm gonna continue on to this, uh, the other rest of my collar here because now I've trimmed off my seam allowance, so all bets are off. I'm just gonna trim a quarter of an inch off here. <laughs> Doing collars is just practice. I, I know they're they're not easy. Um, I used to pin the heck out of them. Oh man, I, collars used to drive me crazy, you guys. They, I used to cry when I, I just was like, I can't get this to work, you know. And it would get the fabric would get so tired, and I just couldn't get it in there. I've learned over the years that for me, pinning is great as for anchor points. I like to do it as I go as long as I know when I get to the anchor point I'm in the same the right spot right I can um, I can trust it and not have so many pins but there's other little things I'll do sometimes where um, like what you can do is pre-sew something like attach it in a little spot or tack it here and there with your sewing machine that way you're like okay this is a non-negotiable spot or I've already set it up to be sewn the way I want and now I just need to do all the middle parts, right? It's kind of like reading the beginning of the book, the end of the book, and the middle of the book and now you just need to fill it in, you know? Um, you just gotta figure out what works for you and it doesn't matter what that is, it doesn't matter if you need to pin the hell out of it, pin the hell out of it. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I've done that before. I've just learned over the years that that doesn't work for me anymore. Um, and I don't know why that is, I think it's just I handle the fabric differently now. I don't know. I don't think it's anything I'm doing better or worse. It just doesn't work for me now. So this is just a trimmed edge. So now I'm going to flip it into the curve there. Just to relax it a little bit. Because the collar, the collar doesn't really need to be clipped. It's the neckline that needs to be clipped. Because we are asking the neck of the garment it's laying flat on your body and now the seam allowance has to go straight up right so um and it's just this little bit right so it's like going nice and smooth on your body here's your shirt right and then all of a sudden right here at the collar stand it's like boink it has to stand up <laughs> and so you need to relax it and let, let it have enough space to do that or if it if it has um enough space you need to clip it so that the fabric can kind of overlap on itself so that um, nothing is p pushing it out of the way or resisting it. Yeah, I, I think anchor points really help me too, Katie. And sometimes, like if I'm really uncertain, um, and you'll, you'll eventually see me do this, um, if I'm really worried about something, I'm sure I've done it here with you guys, I will sew the anchor point. Because sometimes a pin is just just doesn't work. You know, the pins can get in your way. They're easy to, to fall out. They can poke you. 
Um, and that can make you less accurate because you're kind of dealing with that because they're in your way. All right, so remember, I did that on the inside of the garment and now look here, here's my outside of my garment. This is, this is what everyone's gonna see. So now, if it would have been easier for you to press under this long edge on the seam line first, go for it. I'm all about that, you know, that, that's great. I used to do that too. It, it works great. Um, I feel pretty confident that I don't need to do that. It's a pretty small collar stand, you know, when all is said and done. And the seam allowance that you would have had would have, I think, overlapped on itself a little bit. I like it sometimes leaving seam allowance in things like this so that they meet and butt up against each other inside the collar and fill it up. Hi, Ray, how's it going? <laughs> and you can see mine don't, but I would rather have the relaxing. And remember, this is the side on the outside of the garment. I have two layers, so it's going to kind of smooth over those bumps. So I have my little shoulder notch here and I'm just going to pin my anchor point right there. You know, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm going to press this seam right here. That's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna treat this like a um, French seam. Oh, you made boxers yesterday? Awesome. What pattern did you use, Ray? I was looking at some on the Thread Theory site Where's my salami? Here we go. So first I'm gonna press uh, just my seam up like this. Mainly what I'm doing is opening this out now and pressing the seam allowance up. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. pulling it so that none of this collar stand is dipping below the seam. It's my first step. I mean this fabric, you know, it gets really thready, so I can't I can't fiddle around with this too much, otherwise it's gonna be a much bigger, threadier mess, you know. <laughs> I think that's where I fixed my shoulder right there. And now it's a little bound up right there. So we might need to clip that some more right there. These aren't, these aren't my good clipping ones. Oh man. All right, we'll do that at the machine. That's too painful for even me to watch. Barbara um I you know I have those clips Megan and I totally forget to use them they I think it's just a maybe a like when you started sewing and what you got used to type of thing I really want to use those but I forget to use them and, and then I, I feel all thumbs with them <laughs> they're so cool too okay so now I'm gonna press this seam towards the inside of the collar Yeah, that would be helpful, but they just, uh, I just don't use those. If you like using those, totally use those. Those are awesome. You gotta remember, you guys, I, I've sewed a lot in the garment industry. So it's not that I don't approve of those, using those things. I think those things are awesome and I've used them before. I had to sew in environments where those things weren't allowed. And the people that I was designing patterns for weren't allowed to use them either. So I had to figure out ways to sew without using those kinds of things. So, all right, now I'm going to press the collar on the top edge right here. The one we already sewed um, first, right here. I 
at this point, um, a long time ago, I probably would have stitched, top stitched this little edge to help me out a little bit. Well, no, I wouldn't have actually because I haven't finished this here. Never mind. I would have on a collar just to make it lay as flat as possible. Okay, so I'm getting up to here. I don't want to press anything right there because um, I don't want to lock myself in any, any to anything quite yet. So I'm just going to get as close as I can. Now, at this point, it's up to you if you want to turn under this edge and fold it and iron it. Like this, right? So when you get to here, I like to do this. I like to open this up, fold it in there, and then fold it down. Now I don't usually press at this point. I'm going to right now, I'm gonna try it out. Um, I find that it locks me in a little bit. But let's do it. It's a pretty narrow collar, so why not? Let's just try it out. And when you're ironing, I like to look at the anchor points for ironing as well, because you don't wanna get any torquing. You can get torquing with ironing just like in sewing. So just try and pay attention to all of your anchor points. And by now, hopefully, all of your collar is laying flat um, because we pressed it. So you don't have to worry about this buckling, the inside of the collar buckling at all. Hopefully, it's going to stay how we just ironed it. But look, you know, like right now we have the collar flat on the table, right? So the garment can't lay flat because that's going to be on a body. It's a good illustration of how you're going from one cylinder to another cylinder of the body, you know? <laughs> uh, I've just been, uh, I haven't, this, this shirt's going well. Um, it's pretty quick to sew. You haven't missed a whole lot. But I had a false start with my pocket, so, you know, you didn't miss that. <laughs> Almost broke my machine. <laughs> uh, but all I've done is sewn the pockets on. I've sewn the plackets on. I did the shoulder seams and the side seams with uh, French seams, and now we're doing the collar. And then we're going to call it a day because I'm trying to make this a two-part sewing video. <laughs> And it's going together so quickly that uh, we won't have much left. We just have the sleeves and the hem, but we're also going to do the buttons and buttonholes together. So yeah, I mean, think about how someone would sew this in a factory. In a really big factory, they probably would have an automatic machine. They don't get to iron it. All right, so yeah, I like to open this out like this and fold it up and bend it around like that. Right, it is. It's awful when you iron in mistakes, man. Sometimes they are so unforgiving, right? I do that so often. And then I just feel like it's fighting me. It's like the shirt's like, nope, nope, you told me you wanted me to be like this, and I'm going to be like this, you know? It's like full-on teenager attitude. So I uh, have in the past sometimes clipped the corner of the collar that's under my iron right now, like right here, clipped this corner right here. I will tell you that that has gotten me into trouble more often than not, and so I try to avoid it. <laughs> like, I will have to go back and sew something, and I'm like, crap, I clipped the corner. I can't. So um, I try not to. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just... Um, I tend to be kind of a uh, impetuous sewer and I can get myself into a pickle. 
I know that about me. I know my sewing style is not for everybody. All right. Uh, the plackets, um, I will say that they were really easy to sew, but I did not follow the instructions because I don't think, I think I'm missing a couple markings on my pattern to follow the way the instructions are, but I sewed them still in the way, like the way they look like they're done in the rest of the pattern instructions. So you just fold it uh, along uh, the notch and then fold it again and stitch it down. So this is filled with fabric. So it's fold, fold, stitch down, really easy. But there was some little tricky bits of folding in the instructions that I couldn't figure out because I'm missing a line on my pattern. So I didn't get to do that. So I apologize to everyone that's looking for that. But my method is it gonna give you the same result especially the same result for measurements. All right, so we're gonna start with our center back, pin this. I'm still gonna pin it, even though I ironed it. Um, and in a way, it's kind of good to iron this one first because I really, I can, I can be kind of silly about where my start and stops are from my machine. And I like to hide them. I don't like to do it right here. Um, you know, that came about, you guys, because of all the mistakes I've made before. You know, because then you're like taking apart your placket and you have to take apart the back stitch right here. And then you're tearing your fabric or your fabric's getting tired or it's starting to unravel right there. So, um, and I just don't like seeing that glom of thread right here. So I like to do it at the center back or the shoulder and then go all the way around on one fell swoop so I have one start and stop, right? But then the problem with that is that all these pins along the neck will poke me as I'm passing across the top. So there is drawbacks to it. That doesn't seem like such a big deal, but um, it is really annoying and um, I don't like that feeling. Yeah, it looks a lot like the Astro Placket. The Astro Placket is complicated by the fact that you bind the neckline and getting that binding in there and making it um, invisible like as the finish is trickier like I feel like the binding is like oh great I don't have to deal with the facing and then that makes it 10 times harder <laughs> like it's an unnecessary hardship <laughs> with the binding on that placket you think, ah, it'll be easy. And then you go to do it and you're like, oh, shoot. I forgot that this would be kind of hard because of the V-neck. All right, so I'm kind of, I'm pulling out a little bit of my iron fold here because I can see that this edge is kind of coming towards the outside and I'd much rather be on the inside. So I'm on the outside of the shirt. We're sewing on the right side of the garment. And the reason I do that is so that um, you can see exactly what it's going to look like when you're finished and the world sees this part. And so that way you don't have to worry about where your needle lands on the inside. It'll hopefully land on the placket perfectly the same distance away from the seam edge as it does on the outside. But let's be honest, you know, it's probably not <laughs> in a lot of places. <laughs> it's my aim. But um, because I do it on the outside, I don't have to worry about if it does or not, right? So I feel like there was one shoulder we needed to clip a little bit. I think it's this one right here. Just want it to relax a little bit. It was subtle. But you know, with the French seam right there in the shoulder seam, it's already adding an extra bit of thickness that the um, neckline is navigating around. Oh. I got my label in. Oh yeah, hearts, you're getting my label. And I forgot again, dang it. Guys, I'm so out of practice sewing in labels on clothing. I keep getting them in as afterthoughts and then they're just not as good. Where else can I put this? I can't put it anywhere else. 
Everything else is finished. <laughs> it's got to go right here. Uh, it doesn't, Terry. I don't, I'm pretty sure um, I've got it right here if you would like me to tell you. So for 45, oh, I, I'm wrong. Um, I saw the 60 inch wide fabric. So if you're using the 45 inch wide fabric and you're doing, doing the ver version I'm doing, it takes two yards. I feel like you could get it in. Yeah, if you have 60 inch wide fabric though, it's one and a quarter yards for the, the view B. I could put it in the hem. I'd be upside down though. So here's the, um, oh, I don't think you can see that. Yeah, right, Ray, I know. I know what you mean. Um, okay, I lost what I was doing. Where's that spot I was just taking out? Right here, right? Where's the... I, I see these little black threads and I'm like... <gasps> this is the inside of the collar. That's why I have to take it out a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm just looking for the um, center of it so I don't take out too much. I'm going to pin it so I stop looking for it. You know? So I stop torturing myself here. These labels make me laugh every time. I feel, I literally feel like I'm graffitiing their garment. <laughs> A little bit of so so graffiti. Oh, that's cool, Barbara. You love notions and gadgets? That's awesome. Hand so Auntie's all, ha, 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 hand so <laughs> Don't you know our Ceremy? She laughs in the face of hand sewing. <laughs> Basically, I'm a big fat baby. Okay, here we go. Back on track. <laughs> I did a lot of hand sewing recently on, oh, on my, my Tamarack vest because you have to hand sew the welts. And I did some at home too, didn't I? Oh no, I did a lot of seam ripping at home. I took apart my Cali for the third or fourth time. <laughs> okay. Last stitch for the day. I can probably stop pinning, but I'm enjoying it. It's kind of satisfying, I have to admit. All right, so I'm gonna start at the center back here. So now remember, this is the outside of my garment. I want it to look good on this collar. Yeah, I am concerned with how it's gonna look on the inside, but the thing is, I'd much rather look good on the outside of the garment. This collar's never gonna fold down. And the only time people are going to see the inside is when it's hanging on uh, the a hanger inside the heart's store. So I just got to like let go, right? And that, that's going to happen. And when it's hanging in your closet. So. I like to take out the pin before I get to it on collars when the fabric's a little thick. So that the fabric's not like, like uh, being pushed in a little bit, you know. And I put that fold of the collar just past the seam line. So there's a good chance that my stitches on the, are on the inside of the collar are going to be um, 
a, like right in the ditch of the seam or just above it. Very likely. Okay, now I'm getting to my, my front here. So when you're getting close to the edge, let's start, you know, straightening it out and making sure my all is going to be really handy here. Um, you also really want to make sure you're not getting um, torque, you know, torque of your collar. What is this right here? Okay, so I'm folding it up. Making sure it looks good. It's a lot of fabric right there. So look at that, I'm pulling it over like this a little bit because the presser foot is going to press this fabric towards the edge. If anything, it'll fall, this fabric will push off the edge towards me, right? So I'm trying to prevent that as much as possible. Now, when you go to these curves, I'm being super instructional on this collar, aren't I? So um, when you're on these curves, just try to do a nice continuous stitch best you can. Like I, I actually, that was really narrow and thick, so I'm not sure how well I did there. I don't have any of these pins on this end because I already pulled them out. My collar's coming towards the front a little bit here. I didn't really end up correcting that. All right, so now we're past my starting point and all these pins are what I'm gonna kind of avoid my hands. It's really tempting to pull them out as I go by. <laughs> I'm actually gonna pull this a little bit this way. I can prevent what happened over on the other side. Get that edge up there. Okay, so here I am at my curve again. It looks pretty good, so I'm gonna keep going. And make sure I push my seam allowance in there really good. Now I'm going to pivot. Sorry, I'm not looking at chat right now. I don't know if you guys are chatting. All right. <laughs> I have met my quota. Uh, you have my name pretty close. The O is an E. It's like Jeremy with an S-A rather than a... J E. And it's pronounced the same. Well, rhyming wise. So, if you have trouble with this kind of collar, what I recommend is doing the what you know you got to do. You got to practice. You got to cut out a bunch and sew it and set yourself up with the right materials and just, you know, invest a little few dollars in it and some time and then um, sew a bunch of them. All right, so there's my collar. It looks pretty good. There's my back stitch and I can still see it, but it's, it's pretty good. It could be a little better right there. So look, so this is the inside. So look, I'm not on the collar here. I'm barely on. My, my label's a little crooked, but I'm on right here. We're gonna take it. It's not bad. And so then when this is on the garment, on the body, this is how it's gonna look like this, right? So now the collar's sticking straight up from the body. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Yeah, so, um, yeah, and I'm trying to tell you all the things I'm doing because I don't think that I don't remember I'm doing some of these things and I you know it's like you don't know what your hands are doing sometimes that you're doing they're doing so much more than you realize so look at that though this doesn't look very good right here you see that look at this one looks way nicer 
So my problem with this, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? It looks really bad on the camera. It looks even worse there. So you see what I mean? I can get rid of this little point by just kind of fiddling with it and pressing it. But the stitches aren't close enough to the edge. So now if I take it out and I fix it, um, I'm going to have a start stop here and here. So it's just like pick my poison at this point. So, so nice. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's like I do better on curves like this when I come from the top and I go down and I go around. But this time I went from the bottom and up and around. I, it, felt, it felt bad when I was doing it. Oh, sorry, guys. They're going to use landscaping tools out there. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, B minus. I'd give that a solid C. It's going to bug me. I'll probably fix it. You know, but when the button is on there, you know, like this is the things you guys got to think about. Is it, like, if you struggled and you had a, like, long night putting this on and then you got to that point, you're like, oh, I'm done. It looks pretty good. And you see something like that. Don't fix it right away. Walk away. Just set it aside. You've, you know, it's time to go to bed. You know, it's midnight. You worked on it all evening. Go to bed and look at it the next day. Try and put it out of your head and forget that it was an issue so that when you look at it, you're, you're like, wow, okay, this looks a little better. This looks good, you know? Like, oh, I'm so glad. And, and then you're like, oh yeah, I had that collar issue. And then you'll be like, where is it? You probably won't see it right away. And then remember, there's going to be a button and a buttonhole right here. So there's going to be this other thing drawing your eye, you know? Yeah, exactly, Louise. Exactly. It's like driving. I mean, you are. You're driving the machine. And that's what I'm always trying to say is, like, don't be hard on yourself when you're learning to sew. You're operating a machine. You're learning its personality. And you're learning how to operate this and make it do what you want. And you're trying to learn how to put something together. And you're trying to, to meld the two and make it look good, you know? So you're doing a lot of things. So um, there's a lot of little things you can do to kind of calm down issues if they're an issue. Like, that's that, this is unfortunate because if it, if, this, if it were on this one or this was buttoning the other direction, I would totally leave it. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it for today and we'll look at it tomorrow and see how we think, what we think. So tomorrow we're gonna, um, this is really long. I, ha I, I don't think this is gonna go over my blouse very good because my blouse is huge. Like it's really bulky, the one I'm wearing. But I'll show you guys, it's pretty long. It looks pretty long, maybe it's not pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty long. Well, let's hope I can get it on. <laughs> let's see, I'm over here. It's pretty long. Yeah, so. Right, exactly, Ray. I mean, and that is kind of like, I feel like um, I, you guys, I'm used to being scrutinized more than most sewers. People assume I'm perfect when I sew sometimes, and um, I'm, I'm not. You guys know that, right? You guys know that better than anybody I've ever known in my life that um, I'm not perfect. But the thing is, the way I feel about perfection in everything in the world, and this is very philosophical, this is my very extremely philosophical point of view, and I have felt this way since my early 20s, that everything in the world is perfect. The good and the bad is all perfect. You have to have one to know the other. It doesn't make it right, but it's perfect. That's how I feel about um everything. And so with sewing, I just feel like, um, yeah, you know, sometimes it's okay to have your mistakes out there. Most people won't notice them. And at the same time, like big deal. So you made a mistake. <laughs> You're ready to wear stuff has it in there, right? So this is such a cute shirt. Yeah, it is. It's really cute, huh, Brooke? Yeah. And nobody's perfect or we all are perfect. That's the way I like to look at it. Really, Megan? Yeah, you should totally take it in. 
I tried to do that on my Cali. I flipped the pleat around. I shaped the hem. I put vents in. I took the vents out. And then I just made it short. <laughs> that thing is like, you know. Everything I've made in that cool border print fabric is meh. Looks fantastic when it's done. And then um, doesn't fit me right. Because the dolly is a little small. Yeah, right, Ray? I know. I don't, f I know, I don't feel that way all the time too, but, you know. So, um, I'm definitely going to sit here and pull my label so that it straightens out a little bit. <laughs> I'll just tell them to hang it on the hanger crooked. <laughs> so, I'm um, live right now. I got packages for you. Oh, okay. Uh, do you know where my door is? It, it's on the street. Uh, not on the street, but yeah, in the parking lot. Okay. Blue trucks in front of the door. I'm getting packages. <laughs> yeah, it is a Jinx fabric book, right? Okay, well, um, so tomorrow we are going to do the little sleeve cuffs because it's not actual sleeves, it's a little sleeve cuff. This pattern envelope so, shows up so good on the um, camera, doesn't it? And we're gonna put the hem in. And yeah, we're gonna do buttons and buttonholes. I just put these exact same buttons on my, my husband's shirt, so. Yeah. So we'll do that tomorrow, Friday. Can't believe it's Friday tomorrow. 11 a.m. Pacific, and um, we'll finish this, this gal up. Cool, cool. All right. And then on Saturday, we're going to sew the, um, what is it, the, hi, thank you, you can sit there. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, that's fine. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, and so tomorrow, yeah, we'll sew the um, this one. But then on Saturday, we're going to do the Tanya Coulottes by Megan Nielsen pa Patterns. Yeah, I know. I don't know what I just got. Oh, I got my um, Stone Mountain and Daughter order and something else. I don't know what the other thing is. So I'll show you tomorrow what it is. Megan, I literally sometimes forget to open packages. So silly. But I, I was really excited. Like this one, I got a package delivery yesterday. And I was, look at my little watermelon. I saw this Etsy seller. Like I, I don't know how I figured. Oh, Clover featured her watermelon garland. And I was like, I have to have the watermelon garland. And I went to her page and all she had was these little magnets. And I wasn't going to ask her to make me one. Um, and I think, her, I think her Etsy store is called Would You Not? K-N-O-T, Would You Not? Um, and so she... Yeah, so aren't they cute? Because, you know, watermelons for life, baby. <laughs> so, 35 watches. Thank you for telling me that. Let me see how if my YouTube live button is, is, is working. So I have a new place to look at this. I don't know if I can see it. That's awesome. I'm really glad to see 35 people here. Welcome to the stream. I'm Sarah Mee. I'm leaving now. I just thought I'd let you know who I am. <laughs> I stream live on Twitch and YouTube. And um, if you want to be able to chat with us, because a lot of folks, um, you know, love chatting with you, you just need to create an account on YouTube, which is called a channel. You don't have to start streaming. Don't worry. You don't have to start uploading video. So, <laughs> so um, welcome. If you're on a Twitch, hopefully we've got a few extra. You said 36. That's awesome. Yeah, it's always changing, especially towards the end. People start leaving when they know I'm wrapping it up. And if uh, you're re-watching this, join us live sometime. These gals are really awesome. And guys, there's both here. And everyone is all different abilities and sizes and ages and it's great. We have a great time. <laughs> and yeah, so this is my steam ripper. It's one of my best friends lately. How about you? Okay, oh, you guys, the giveaway. Yeah, yeah. So it is my one year anniversary this month of streaming live. And I put together a few giveaway items. Hearts Fabric has generously donated this fabric here. Not, you can't have my buttons. Um, this is the uh, fabric we made the dress number two out of recently. It's awesome. Wash and wear, hardly wrinkles, super drapey and comfortable. And I'm including some 
I think this is a, like two and a half, three yards. Sorry if I can't remember about that. So I have included here some Me Made Labels by Kylie and the Machine. This is one of their stickers. And I'm gonna give you four pieces of bias binding from my personal stash. You guys know what a big fan of, of binding I am, but look at how drastically different this fabric looks with each one. So there's this one here. So you really can change the look of the fabric by putting the binding with it. This is my knit print that I designed and it's on Spoon Flower for sale, but it goes so good with it, I had to um, conclude it. This is called the Patchwork Print. Um, it was an art gallery fabric and it came with other like Notion prints. And then there's this one here with the greens and the pinks. So you get over three yards of each of these. You don't have to sew it with that, but you could. And some enamel pins by Hearts Fabric. And of course you need an awl just like mine to sew your binding with. And I'm gonna give you one of my chicken boots, notions cases from my old business. I don't have very many things left, but that's one of them. And it all goes inside there. So if you would like to enter to win this week's giveaway, you just need to comment in the video um, description, not in the chat, but in the video description once it's uploaded, you can chat, you can, you can just, ugh. you can comment, make a comment in the comments section. Hi, Carol. And um, I just want to hear like something from your sewing journey, like how you came to sewing, um, what got you into sewing, uh, what, what did you first start sewing, whatever you want. I just want to hear your sewing. And I've been seeing you guys comment. You'll have to do this once this week to be entered to win and then I'll pick the winner on Sunday. So you have through midnight on Saturday Pacific time. So um, you can um, comment something about your sewing journey, whatever it is. And I, I'm, I can't wait to read them all, pretty excited. So I know I saw, I saw a few of you have been commenting but I haven't read any of them yet. I'm like saving it for my Sunday ritual, pretty excited. <laughs> So, um, cool. So that's what you got to do. So you just need to make sure you're subscribed to the screen, stream, like the, like the video, and then make a comment in the comment section about your sewing journey. You can be brand new to it. And then you need to be able to watch your comments, you guys, because the gal who won last week has not responded to my comment yet. And that was Felicity. So Felicity, if you're watching, you won, and you need to comment and let me, and email me at sosolive at gmail.com. So. All right. All right. All right, you guys. Um, I will see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>